Hello and welcome to First Chapter Fridays with Miss Valine here, your CCMS Media Specialist coming from the fiction section up here in our wonderful, I always call this my, my, my nest, my, my, my tree house because I can't wait to share this with you guys, especially you sixth graders. Oh, it's so lovely. There's windows all around and I hear that, um, you know, things are getting a little better out there. So fingers crossed, all of them, toes too, that we get to come back to school at least the beginning of next year so I can share this great place with you. Until then, we got First Chapter Fridays where I get to share great books with you. And today I bring to you a brand spanking new book right out of the box, just put into Destiny, a book called Star Crossed by Barbara D. And if the first thing you thought of was Romeo and Juliet because the star-crossed lovers in Romeo and Juliet, you are correct. Star-crossed is actually a Romeo and Juliet inspired book. But in this case, we have eighth graders, Maddie, who um, is, she is cast in the eighth grade play as Romeo. And she is going to be playing um, with her crush. It's her crush that she's playing against Gemma. So I'm sure there's gonna be some chemistry there between Maddie and Gemma during this Romeo and Juliet, or maybe just awkwardness being that I don't think Gemma even knows that Maddie has a crush on her. Um, and then you've got poor Maddie, you know, who is just getting all of these feels and not understanding them and is feeling very awkward about herself and just unsure and just really confused because just like a couple of weeks ago, she had a crush on a boy named Elijah. So it is a timely book, um, being that a lot of you are seventh, eighth grade, just like Maddie and Gemma are here. And Maybe you've got some feels going on too, like they do, and some confusion and whatnot. And that is one of the reasons why Barbara D wrote this book. Besides it being really hilarious and funny, and just maybe you can make a lot of connections to it. All right, from the back. Let me see if I can read it because it's awfully tiny. Let's see. Star Cross by Barbara D. 13-year-old Maddie is thrilled when she learns the eighth grade play will be Romeo and Juliet. In particular, she's excited to share the stage with Gemma Braithwaite, who has been cast as Juliet. Gemma is brilliant and Maddie starts to see her as a more than just a friend, even though Maddie has also had an off and on crush on her classmate, Elijah, since, well, forever. Is it possible to have crushes on both boys and girls? If that wasn't enough to deal with, Due to the last minute emergency, Maddie is also is asked to step at, at sorry, Maddie is asked to step in as Romeo opposite Gemma's Juliet, just as Maddie's secret crush starts to become not so secret in her group of friends. In this funny, sweet, and clever look at the complicated nature of middle school romance, Maddie learns how to become a lead player in her own life. Coming straight to you in the first chapter. Got a little quote from Romeo and Juliet in Romeo from Romeo and Juliet. In fair Verona, where we lay our scene, Romeo and Juliet, prologue two. It wasn't about me, I knew, but still, I hadn't been invited to Willow's Halloween party, and I was okay with it. Unlike a lot of my classmates, I didn't plan my schedule around her parties, which were usually sweaty and overcrowded, the sort of thing where you spent the whole time shouting over music you'd never listen to on your own. She'd always, always invite me to her Halloween parties before, and I'd always gone, mostly because my two friends, Tessa Pollock and Lucy Yang, were going, and the three of us always stuck together. Everyone knew this, even Willow, who never paid us much attention. The weird thing was how she'd invited Lucy, even though she'd never hung out with Willow, and Tessa, even though Willow pretty much hated her, but not me. Don't feel bad, Maddie, Lucy urged me. She looked worried. 
Lucy was always fussing over this sort of stuff, trying to make sure everyone felt comfortable. The idea that she was invited when I wasn't, well, I could tell you she felt terrible. I heard she invited only half the class, so I'm sure it wasn't personal. How could it not be personal? Tessa demanded. Willa decides who's invited and who's not. What could be more personal than that? You guys, I'm fine, I insisted. But still, I tried to think if I'd offended Willow lately, if maybe I'd forgotten to congratulate her on scoring a goal or something. Willow was the type of person who expected face-to-face -face compliments, not just cheer. Tessa snorted. Of course you're not fine, Maddie. How could anyone be fine about being left out of the biggest party of the year? We were at Verona's, this new Froyo place in town where you could design your own Sundays. It was having, I was having chocolate fudge with chocolate chips and crushed brownies. Lucy was having strawberry with a bunch of fruit on top and Tessa was having vanilla drowned in almost every topping imaginable. Gummies, marshmallows, peanut butter cups, hot fudge, strawberry syrup, coconut. It looked like a small volcano had erupted in her cup, tapping gummy bears in lava, like a yogurt Pompeii or something. Well, Maddie, if you're not going, neither am I, Lucy said. What? I don't know why she, this surprised me because it was typical Lucy. That's really sweet, but I wouldn't be, it wouldn't be fair. I mean, to you, are you joking? Why would I do something that wasn't fair to you? Listen, we're all going, including Maddie, Tessa declared, waving her spoon for emphasis. I took an enormous bite of my creation. Well, aside from the fact that Willow obviously doesn't want me there, it's supposed to be a costume party, right? And I'm not a costumey sort of person. How can you say that, Lucy protested. Your costumes are always so original, Maddie. That gear you went with the sorting hat? Yeah, people just thought I was a witch. Okay, but last year, you went as Matilda. I groaned at the memory. Last year, I thought, okay, my name is Matilda. How much more obvious could that be? Besides, who hasn't read Matilda? So I wore my half-sister Kara's old school uniform and my brother Mason's tie, and I made my hair all crazy and with spray. Liam Harrison, the coolest boy in the grade, at least according to him, asked if I was Eloise, you know, the bratty little girl at the hotel. Clearly, I was the, it was the worst costume. I'm the worst at costume, I told my friends. Maybe you're overthinking it, Tessa said. You don't always have to do a book thing, you know. You could just wear a really cool mask. But I don't own a mask, even a non-cool one. She poked two holes in her napkin and held it over my face. Voila, mask. And the thing you about wearing a costume, Maddie, no one will know it's you. She stage whispered the last part, cupping her hands over her mouth. Yeah, maybe, I said. If I totally cover myself, including my head, and if I disguise my voice, but I don't know the idea of sneaking into Willow's party. I shook my head. Maddie, come on, Lucy cut in. You can spend Halloween sitting home by yourself. It's bad luck or bad karma or bad something. She ate a raspberry. Oh, and by the way, she added, not that it matters, but I heard Elijah's going. I poked a brownie chunk with my spoon. Yeah, well, woohoo. Okay, so what did I miss? Tessa had been away all last weekend at the theater camp reunion and she was catching up on the news. What happened with Elijah? Nothing, I told her. I saw him in the library on Sunday, so I said hello. It was like, hey, how was your weekend? Wanna hear about mine? He didn't even answer. Whoa, Tessa said. Literally didn't? Yep, totally ignored me. Maybe he wasn't ignoring you, ignoring you. Maybe he just didn't hear, Lucy suggested. I raised my eyebrow at her in a quiet library when I was talking exactly as loud as this. Maybe he had earbuds in? Lucy, he was just sitting in the graphic novel section reading an old Batman comic. No earbuds, no anything. I checked. Tessa licked some froyo off her spoon. You know, 
I hate to say this, Maddie, but in my opinion, Elijah is a stuck up dirt bag. You're probably right. That stupid thing is, I think I still like him. That is stupid, Tessa agreed. Why do you like him? I sighed. Because how do you answer that kind of question? It's like explaining why you think a joke is funny or why a song stays in your head or why you like chocolate fudge frozen yogurt or the color blue or you just like what you like, like who you like, even if a person acts like a stuck up dirt bag sometimes. Besides, liking Elijah was just what I did what I'd done since the start of seventh grade last year, and I suddenly realized that I kept staring at him. He wasn't just cute with the wavy dark hair and the big brown eyes. He was really smart, especially about words. He always raised his hand in English and said non-obvious things. I could tell our teacher, Mr. Torres, appreciated his comments and how many eighth grade boys spent summer vacation at, his, at the town library. Only Elijah did. I mean, really, considering me, it made perfect sense. For me to have him as my crush for an entire year, I scribbled his name in my back of my math binder and tried to think up words that rhymed with Elijah besides ya, yeah, while he read Batman comics or whatever. Because the thing was, who else was I supposed to like? But it was hard to say this without sounding slightly loserish or like a person who enjoyed feeling sorry for herself, which I didn't. Earth to Maddie, Tessa said. Come in, space girl. Uh, yeah, sorry, I, I was just thinking. I stirred my froyo counterclockwise and ate a spoonful of soggy chocolate chips. I guess I like Elijah's eyebrows and the way he laughs. Tessa snorted. Okay, well that explains everything. Maddie, listen to me, Lucy said, reaching across the table to pat my shoulder. Go to Willow's party, wear a costume, take a really good look at Elijah, see how he acts if he doesn't know it's you. It'll be a test. If you still think he's worth spending the entire year crushing on, go ahead. But maybe you'll decide he isn't worth it. And maybe you'll notice someone else. Yeah, like who? By then, we'd noticed everyone in middle school. There wasn't nobody left to notice. I don't know, Lucy admitted. I just think you should keep your eyes open. Right then, Charlotte Pangle and Isabel Guzman walked into Verona's. They were two of Willow Kaplan's sidekicks, always playing on Willow's team and cheering her on in the stands. Seriously, it was a strange, seriously, it was strange that they were here without her because they tagged after Willow all over town. Charlotte and Isabel were the kind of girls who were always whispering to each other whatever they were saying. It was probably something they'd rather not hear. I poke Lucy's elbow. Come on, let's go. Why? Tessa challenged me. I haven't finished eating. Just take it with you, Lucy said. But I like it here. I like these chairs. Don't you think these chairs are really comfy? Tessa sat back in hers, kicking out her skinny legs as if she was sunning herself by a pool. She'd scoop up a spoonful of froyo lava and beamed at us. Lucy and I exchanged glass glances and I can tell she wanted to leave as much as I did, but neither of us trusted Tessa enough to leave her behind. The thing about Tessa was sometimes her off switch malfunctioned, especially around people who didn't appreciate her coolness. So the three of us sat there, not budging while Charlotte and Isabel helped themselves to yogurt and toppings and paid the lady at the counter who was probably Verona, who was possibly Verona, and took seats at the table opposite us. Lucia, Lucy and I pantomimed eating, even though by then we had nothing left in our paper cups. Charlotte and Isabel whispered. The radio was playing some mom era song and possibly Verona was humming along as she sprayed and wiped the counter. Finally, Charlotte slapped down her spoon. Okay. That is just so rude. Tessa blinked at her. I'm sorry? Right, Tessa? Like you don't know? I really don't, Charlotte. Why don't you tell me? The way you keep staring at us, Isabel said. It's kind of creepy, actually. Tessa raised her eyebrows. You think I'm staring at you? Why would I even want to? Who knows, Charlotte said, smirking. Maybe you're wondering what it's like not to be ugly. 
Tessa paled. Considering she was naturally fair-skinned with wispy blonde hair and light blue eyes, pale on her looking kind of alarming. But then it was like something clicked inside her and she practically leaped out of her chair. I'm ugly? You're like a toad, ugly and venomous. Thy face is not worth sunburning. Oh, oh, I thought, because I'd seen this before. When Tessa got too angry to think up words, she quoted lines from plays. Often it got on people's nerves. Thy? Charlotte hooted. Thy? Tessa, come on, we need to leave, I said, grabbing her arm. She pulled away from me, avoiding my eyes. It's Shakespeare, she informed Charlotte. It means your, your face is not worth sunburning. I know what thy means, you moron. I meant, who talks like that? Tessa did a fancy bow. I do. Isabel rolled her eyes. Yeah, Tessa, and we all love hearing it. Okay, guys, Lucy said, stepping in front of Charlotte. Can we all please? Tessa ignored her. At least I have something to show off. But you, Charlotte, are just Willow's little shadow. You can't think for one single thought for yourself. Thou hast no more brain than I have in my elbow. There she goes again, Isabel told Charlotte. Mine elbows. Oh, is Shakespeare hard for you? Tessa asked sympathetically. Allow me to translate. Mine means my elbows means elbows. The door opened, in walked Willow. And as soon as she entered the shop, you can tell she smelled a fight. What's going on? She asked in a sharp, accusing voice. Nothing, I said quickly. Charlotte and Tessa were just arguing, but it's over now, right? I glared at Tessa. Really? Willow narrowed her eyes at me. Well, it doesn't look like it's over. It doesn't feel over. Because it's not, Charlotte said. Tessa just basically called me stupid. Huh? Did she? The thing is, Tessa, if you're being nasty to my friend, Tessa's cheek turned pink. I'm just defending myself, Willow. Am I supposed to stand here and allow your little lap dog? Okay, so now you're calling me a dog, Charlotte's eyes popped. No, Tessa said. Although, actually, I do wish thou wert a dog, that I might love thee something. What? Should I translate, Charlotte? Thee means stop. Possibly Verona shouted. She was in front of us now, her hands on her hips. If you girls can't have a pleasant, quiet conversation without name calling, you aren't welcome here. But she started it, Charlotte protested, pointing at Tessa. That's not true, I said loudly. Loosely frowned at me. I don't care who started anything, Verona snapped. It's my shop and I can't have fighting in here, period. Now, why don't you girls take your froyos and come back when you can act decently like well-behaved young women? She walked over to the door and held it open for us. It occurred to me that I'd never been kicked out of anywhere before and I hadn't done anything to deserve it. Although, in a way, I wished I had. I mean, I sort of just felt like a spectator. All six of us filed out of Verona's. Tessa was the last to exit. And as she did, she did another fancy bow, doing a complicated hand gesture that ended with her tipping an imaginary hat. Fairest day, I humbly take my leave, said Tessa. Yeah, right, growled definitely Verona. Star Crossed by Barbara D. That was the first chapter from a story about a young girl who finds, finds herself, finds out who she is and gosh, tries to navigate the whole middle school thing, right? I hope you enjoyed it. This uh, book is available for you on Destiny Discover. All you need to do is go to CCMS Media Center Click on Destiny Discover, log in, look up Starcrossed if you're interested in checking it out. Click on hold it. I will email you when it is ready to pick up in the school office. Enjoy your weekend, everybody. Bye.